Hi, students. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim, and thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So uh, it's really getting tougher, you know, and this is something that I am not going to support, and the, my channel does not support anything that got to do with bullying and harassment, and that it's on period. So Palestinians are always out, out there wilding. Why? Because they feel like black people are leaving them in the middle of the sea. And I don't know why they are so entitled. They feel like they are entitled to black people's help or something. I am going to say this. When it comes to politics, we might not actually agree or we might agree to disagree and that it's good. Okay. And at some point, we might not have a stand, like same stand. They are going on black people's videos telling them to uh, yank off the watermelon flag. On their bios, why? Because they do not care about uh, Palestinians, right? And that uh, every day Palestinians are dying. Now, I am going to say this. Every day, people that look like me are also dying. And I do not see anybody coming out to speak for us at the same time. Whatever black people did was because they know that this is what they are supposed to do, do as human beings. Or telling them that they are not supposed to vote for a particular person because of what happened and all of that. I don't think it sits right with me. But what I am saying is that I, we can all do better. I mean, enough of all of this. Let's get into this. I'm not mad at all. I think that y'all don't know what anger looks like. So many people think that my tone or my cadence means that I'm angry. No, that's just how I talk when I'm not trying to play around with y'all. Nobody's mad. I don't care what any of y'all said. Yeah, I took it out of my bio. Ain't that what y'all wanted? Isn't that what they told me to do? Isn't that what I was told to do? I'm just listening to what they said. So what's the problem? Why are y'all mad? Why did she run over there and make that video? I did what I was asked to do. But that's a problem, right? Because I'm not going to be all doormat and get pushed around and be told what I'm going to do. Nobody's mad. But y'all. Y'all are mad. Because y'all can't control me. Y'all can't dictate what the hell I'm going to do. Y'all can't decide how I'm going to respond to her. Y'all can't decide what I'm going to say to anybody. And maybe that's why they should leave me alone. I have never gone to Maya. I have never gone to anybody else. I be in my own little sandbox having a good time. And then people come over here and decide that they're going to be able to say whatever they want. And guess what? Me too. Evil twin, evil twin. Earlier today, I saw a video on my For You page of a woman of color responding to a comment from someone saying, if you're going to vote for Kamala Harris, take the Palestinian flag out of your bio because the woman was supporting Palestine and had the Palestinian flag in her bio. And her response was, okay, I'm never going to support Palestine again. And I was reading the comments and I was like, there's other countries struggling in the world. Not everything's about Palestine. If you can't listen to Palestinians telling you that Kamala Harris funded and supported our genocide. Therefore, we are not voting for her. Therefore, we are not going to support her publicly. If you can hear us say that and your reaction is, well, I'm never, I don't care about Palestine. I'm not, I'm never gonna talk about it again. I'm never gonna support you guys again. You're a really bad person and you never actually cared about Palestine. People treat politics like it's just like a trend. Like it's really cute to be like, I love Biden, I hate Biden, I hate Kamala, I love Kamala, I love Palestine, I hate Palestine. Palestine isn't a trend because thousands of Palestinians are dying every day while you sit on your phone and decide whether or not you're gonna support Palestine today. I am glad that that girl took Palestine out of her bio um, because she was, obviously never a Palestine supporter. And if you can be that easily convinced that the people in Palestine don't deserve your support because someone told you that you're wrong for voting for the person who funded their genocide, then you really never cared. And it's really horrible. You can have your opinions on Kamala. I'm not here to tell anyone who to vote for or who not to vote for. I'm also very much not a Trump supporter. I would never vote for Trump. I don't want him to win. He also hates Palestine. But if that's all it took to for you to publicly revoke your support of the nation where babies are dying, where they have the highest number of amputated children in the world, you never cared in the first place and you just saw it was such a fun trend to do while you were waiting for the next big thing. That is Mom La Harris. You disgust me. Hey guys, so <clears throat> I've been seeing this creator um, absolutely been cooking 
the hell out of a lot of pro-Palestine supporters um, that are talking down on black folks that are either undecided on their vote uh, for this coming election or is flat out voting for Kamala, specifically this Maya person in general. And it just made me realize something. All those pro-Palestine people that sat here and said, hey, if you're voting for Kamala this this November, take that watermelon out your bio. You never really was a supporter of Palestine. Well, to the Palestinian people that feel that way about black people that want to vote for Kamala this November, if you have to give us an ultimatum, then you never really cared for our support of you in the first place. I think you only appreciate our support when it's the way you want it. If it ain't the way you want it, then you got an issue with it. And I think that's where the problem lies. Without black people, a lot of these movements don't exist. A lot of these movements don't hit a certain level, respectfully. Whether it be the pro-Palestine movement, whether it be, you know, white women asking for the help of black women against the overturn of Roe v. Wade. None of these movements move without black people. So if black people for once in their lives are saying, hey, as a whole, we need to put ourselves first. I think you need to just respect that. Or else none of y'all movement is going to be making any type of waves, respectfully. Okay, so I didn't really necessarily want to touch this conversation with the 10-foot pole, but then I was like, I need to touch it with the 10-foot pole, so let's talk about it. Now, if you built your For You page like I have, brick by brick, it is likely that you are abreast of this conversation that has been going on between these two creators, specifically the videos of them going back and forth, and then, of course, the clips of their subsequent live that I think happened yesterday of them having a conversation amongst each other, right? Like I said, didn't particularly want to touch it with a 10-foot pole because the conversation is truly about everyone being correct and everyone being dead ass the fuck wrong period and judging by the conversations that have you know devolved on my for you page i fear that a lot of us lack the ability to hold those two realities in the palm of our hands the first thing that i want to say and need to say desperately is that in order to enact radical change on this planet on this world and build build up global solidarity it's gonna take a lot of humbling and it's gonna take a lot of us to stand united against centuries centuries of divisive language that has been infiltrated amongst all marginalized oppressed groups of the world by the powers that be because mind you being black Black American and being pro-Palestinian is not mutually exclusive, though a lot of people online are acting and talking as if those two things are mutually exclusive, right? I don't think y'all really get what we are going against. If we are trying to actually radically, fundamentally change how this world works, you have to radically, fundamentally change how you engage with these conversations. And like I said, these two are both dead ass right and dead ass wrong. Because the truth of the matter is, the very same people are behind the oppression of both groups in both situations, which I think everyone fails to understand and which gets pushed to the background when you say this conversation is a black American versus pro-Palestinian thing. The truth is we are being screwed by the same fucking people. And this us versus them mentality is something that they've created. We are fighting and arguing with each other within a binary, within a paradigm that the people that are oppressing us created. There is no such thing as us versus them when it comes to marginalized people, when it comes to building global solidarity. It's all of us against the people that have been propagandizing you to believe that one of our group's freedoms is at the expense of the other. When in actuality, we will all be freed if we go against collectively the same people. I feel like the first step 
really into building radical global solidarity is to leave your ego at the motherfucking door and understand that we have to hold space for us to not interact with each other 100% correctly, to hold space for us to maybe hurt each other's feelings and to hold space for us to have open conversations on how to traverse the obstacles that we are going to have to traverse because we have been programmed to not work with each other, but to work against each other. And what I mean by that truly is they have spent unforeseen amounts of money, unforeseen amounts uh, amounts of time in order to solidify this us versus them dynamic that you guys continue to play within to this day. It's not for us. We are fighting each other within the confines and the borders of what the oppressor wants us to fight amongst each other about in the way that they want us to fight amongst each other. I'm sorry to burst a lot of y'all bubble, but creating global solidarity is more than having several fucking flags in your damn bio, okay? On top of that, black Americans, you know, again, like I, I've said this, people have been asking about my political takes, my political opinions, baby. I'm never going to tell you. I walk a fine line and that line will not be defined for you. Um, as we've all kind of said, a lot of what people are going to do has already been decided already. There's a very small sliver of people that is undecided about what they're going to do come November. But what I do want black Americans to understand, black Americans specifically, Specifically, who have been very blue MAGA, who have been very much pro Kamala and anti any critiques on her, you have got to understand that global politics are 100% defined by the, p the people we put into power in our own country. And furthermore, just because you're black in America does not mean that you are not privileged in many, many fucking ways. Because the true understanding of intersectionality is understanding that based on your identity, you are privileged and disadvantaged in many ways, in many forms, all the time, constantly. And all I will say is whoever you vote for, um, your comfort and your peace of mind come at the direct expense to people in the global south. And it would behoove you to understand that in this moment. That's all I will say. Uh, if you're interested in the podcast, link in the bio. Um, new episode coming out shortly this month. We will be talking about slavery and colorism, so get into that. Link in the bio to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All of the things. Mwah. Let's go. I'm going to say this one more time. If y'all can't stop being anti-black when you disagree with black people, you don't need to be speaking on black people. If y'all continue to harass black people, black women, y'all will change the way in which they advocate for in this case, the Palestinian cause. And this black woman said that she felt forced to vote for Kamala because ultimately that's the position she, like many other black people are in, in this fucking country. And y'all resort to harassing them, essentially. Saying that they're not doing enough, saying that they're not advocating for the cause properly without having a real conversation with them, without empathizing with the situation that is being black in America. You're not doing anything for the cause that is Palestine. It's just true, you're not. You're going to lose a lot of black people because y'all are creating an unsafe and anti-black space for black people to express the reality of being black in America. You think that that essentially means that they are the villain of the story. That's not true. And the more you guys treat black people as the villain, the less that they're going to show up and advocate for your cause in the way that you want them to. It's just the truth. Because personally, no troll comment can stop me from being an advocate. No troll comment can stop me from making content about it. But that's not the same for every other black person. They might stop making content from it because they don't want to get harassed. And I can't tell them not to, you know, I can't tell them otherwise. Because it's not fair that they're being harassed. They're being attacked with anti-blackness day in and day out whenever they do speak on it. Would that discourage me? No. But is that inevitably going to discourage other people? Yes. And if you think otherwise, your intersectionality is fucking broken. When you made a video sitting here saying, that a woman of color, first of all, she's not a woman of color, she's a black woman. I don't know who told you otherwise, but they got you fucked up and you fell for it. When you got on here and you retold your interpretation of her video, knowing damn well her video's still up, I fact checked it. I saw all the videos. You were very off base. You knew that she was going to get harassment. You have 2.1 million followers. There's no such thing as a sneak disc when you have a big account. I don't understand why y'all don't understand that. You guys do the same shit every single time. How many times do I have to say stop with the fucking sneak disses? And then she made a response. I mean, listen, at this point, you've kind of validated her frustration because first it started with, right, body counts. 
And I get those accounts all the fucking time. But then it turned into a creator with 2.1 million followers talking down to her. That's insane. And I'm gonna say this to all my spam accounts and bot accounts and private accounts, your place isn't to play fucking morality police in black people's comment sections. Y'all don't stand to lose anything from what you do. You don't do anything. You don't repost, you don't make content, you don't advocate for something on your page. It's so crazy because one of my mutuals made a video and there was this person, you know, going in and in and in and in and in and then sitting there and saying, well, I can't make any content because if I do, I'm gonna get harassed. But you're harassing black people in their comment section, but you understand why you can't make shit because you don't want to get harassed in your real life or, or get persecuted in your real life or, you know, get fired from your job, but you want to be the fucking morality police? Make it make sense. Make it fucking make sense. Y'all are so comfortable talking to black people any type of way because at the end of the day where you're punching bags, and it's just the truth. It's just the truth. It's easy to punch down. It's so easy. And as somebody who's been speaking on Palestine, who's been speaking on Congo and Sudan, who's been organizing far before that, and who will continue to organize regardless of the harassment that I get because I'm a big girl, I can handle it. It's still just so disappointing to see other organizers or protesters or advocates fall back on anti-black rhetoric when they have disagreements with black people. Because at this point, I don't even care what y'all are arguing about. Cut the anti-black shit out. Like, you will not help your cause being anti-black. Period. I don't care what cause it is. That's just the truth. If y'all don't fix your intersectionality, you will fucking lose support from people online. Not because they want to stop advocating for Palestine, but because they want to stop interacting with people who are anti-black towards them. That is the natural thing that human beings will do. I get what you're saying, but I don't think the comparison is one-to-one. -one. Black people are being forced to make a decision when it comes to their vote. White people benefit from the police. A lot of people, Palestinian protesters in this case, or maybe even Palestinians themselves, are not empathizing with the position that black people are in. I've been uncommitted with Kamala. I can talk to black people who understand the situation Palestinians are in and get them to understand what it means to be uncommitted against Kamala. I can have an, a conversation with them because I'm empathizing with them, because I get where they're coming from, I get their fears and their frustrations, and I know how to address them in communication. A lot of people on the internet jump to talking crazy. And it wasn't just one comment, it was hundreds. So when someone who may not be used to internet attention, when someone who, before that she had a small account, I believe, and now she has a bigger account than mine, when someone who doesn't want to be talked to crazy, that is a form of harassment. And when engaged with that harassment, some people will choose to try to get out of the harassment and some people will choose to just ignore it. You can't be mad when people are, are being talked to crazy and they respond with how you wanted them to respond to. Because of the context of the situation is even worse. She was just talking to Republicans about war and imperialism and how Democrats are complicit in it and how Republicans are complicit in it. But regardless, she feels forced to put her vote towards Kamala. That's a conversation that can be had. We can conversate with what it means to be in an uncommitted position and how to achieve the best results, not just for Palestinian people, but for black people, for Congolese people, Sudanese, Haitian, etc. Talking to black women crazy doesn't help anyone. And it only made the situation worse when Maya got on here telling her retelling of the video, knowing that her followers are going to harass her and not caring. Then going on live with her, kind of doubling down and then kind of realizing she needs to stop doubling down and then, you know, addressing her comments after being very defensive. It just goes to show that a lot of people are not really equipped with what it means to talk to black people who go through the same oppression, who've been through historically similar oppressions, and based off of what ethnicity they might be, are actively going through the same oppression right now. We just went through this with another video about a Congolese creator saying something similar, and I disagree with him, and I told people to disagree with him respectfully. And this is my thing. I'm like really tired of people disagreeing with black people or trying to inform black people of what they want to happen action plan wise disrespectfully. Because if it doesn't come from a vein of disrespect, it shouldn't start with that. I don't talk to black people crazy on my page and I post all the time and I talk about black people who I disagree with all the time. So I don't see why anybody else should be doing the same thing. And I'm quick to call the bitch out if I disagree with them. I don't really care. I don't save face for nobody. I set people to the same standard that I've set for myself. If you're going to call someone out, you need to do so with the, with the same level of respect or disrespect that they've already given you. 
Setting boundaries is fine. Being disrespectful is not. Talking to black people with empathy is what people should be doing. Not sitting there and villainizing them for being stuck in this system that they're actively being oppressed in. When I mean anti-blackness, I mean whitewashing her identity as a black woman, villainizing her for her response to being harassed, doubling down on it, and then realizing how she had fucked up after. After tone policing her several times. The point that I'm trying to illustrate is that instead of empathizing with black people, seeing their fears, seeing their frustration, seeing how they're stuck in between a rock and a hard place with the oppression that they're facing, instead of explaining to her you know, more about the uncommitted movement and addressing her fears, it instantly becomes this conversation of, of, of talking to them crazy. Because it's clear that Maya either didn't fully watch a video, wasn't really interested in watching the video, or didn't understand the context of the video having existed. I did all of that effort and work and labor in order to talk about it. She has 2.1 million followers. It is literally her obligation to do the same. Why the fuck am I putting myself to this standard? with less than 10k followers and i'm not getting any money from this not saying that she's doing it for money i'm saying that with a larger account comes responsibilities and you know dragging a black woman who in the context being she was just getting harassed is a little anti-black it is like she made the conscious choice to do that she could have done better she addressed it and she apologized so it really isn't even up for debate not saying you're debating with me but some people are in my comment section saying you know how, how is she being anti-black she apologized for it she apologized for it she acknowledged it and apologized so it's not really not up for debate i'm reporting on it late because i saw it late i just want y'all to empathize with the fears and concerns of black people that's all i'm asking for and i feel like i'm not asking for much by y'all i mean people on the internet not you specifically i want people to understand that everyday regular people don't know all the time how to be the best advocates that they can be and instead of demonizing them and telling them to shut the fuck up and and and, and you know leave right talk to them like real fucking human beings and it feels as though when black people fuck up or black people mess up or black people say the wrong thing or black people do the wrong thing or black people don't always you know address every single issue the proper way that needs to be addressed they get dragged under the mud without any sort of empathy but we just had a white woman come on this app and be racist literally a trump supporter people are giving more empathy to trump supporting fucking racists than black women who feel conflicted. That is, that is, it's a systemic thing that people are contributing towards. So I hope I've painted that picture better, but I, I'm tired of seeing black women get harassed on the internet. I really am, really am. It was always gonna lead to this. This is the result of a month of anxiety, fear, and tension between the blue party people. And I'm only calling us the blue party people because the issue lies within people who do not support Donald Trump. Who, by the way, are probably having the best of time watching us tear each other apart. But at the end of the day, from how the conversation kept going, I really quickly realized that it was going to be at the end of it, a Palestinian versus a black person going toe to toe. Not because we had long lasting racial tensions between both parties, no, but mainly because Kamala's supporters are mainly black folk. Majority of the people who don't support Kamala Harris, who are not from the Republican Party, are Palestinians. But in regards of the conflict between Tory and Maya specifically, I too, I decided that I would stop speaking on these things. Not because I would stop supporting them, but just because I felt like there wasn't a space for me to actually address concerns that I actually had. Because we all as a community have not created a space to actually bring out concerns in a safe manner to do so. Because if somebody talks about one thing, everybody else is assuming another thing based on what they're saying. If I say I'm not voting for Kamala, then I'm voting for Trump. If I say I am voting for Kamala, then I'm voting for genocide. If I criticize Kamala Harris and I want Trump to win. If I criticize leftists and I never cared about Palestinians and I want everyone to die. If I criticize liberals and I want Trump to win and I want to lose my rights as a black woman in America. And I wish we'd be honest about the entire conversation because it's not bots talking to each other and it's not just trolls talking to each other. Those are people talking to people. It was black people that were telling other black people that they don't care about black problems in America because they're too focused on Palestine. It was Palestinian accounts that I saw talking to other black people that they didn't care about genocides because they wanted to vote for Kamala Harris. We could have sat down and taken responsibility and accountability for our communities because all of us are acting based on fear and emotion. And when everyone's lifting the load, the weight is not so heavy. But we could keep arguing. That's cool too. Because in three months, somebody's walking the fucking stage. And God themselves would have to come down here and have America sever ties with Israel's because that's not happening within the next three months. I'm sorry to tell you there's not a thing that we can do unless we set the entire fucking country on fire to have america not kamala not donald not biden but america sever ties with israel i forgot to say this but calling for a ceasefire is not the same thing as calling for 
America to sever ties with Israel, calling for a ceasefire is the least that we can do. Pushing Kamala Harris to ask and beg or do whatever the fuck she can do for a ceasefire is the least she could do if you're going to support her. Those are different things. Yeah, okay, I heard the shit about the third party. Okay, third party, Jill, 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 I'm hearing it. But remind yourself that the population on TikTok is far smaller than the great population of the citizens of the US. Even better, the population on TikTok is not fully catered to this kind of conversation. So we're a subgroup within a subgroup. So sure, we could talk about third party but do you think they're gonna win and if you say yes let me tell you that i've recently spoken to a lot of elder people or like older people in my family and other people's families who are very happy about kamala being on stage and they're going to vote for her and i'll tell you what they have no fucking idea who third parties are they don't know and they don't care to know how we're gonna convince that demographic of people to care about jill stein in three months if we all were just a bit honest about our circumstances i think we would probably have a better conversation i'm not saying that we would come up with a resolution that's quite impossible in three months that's why the old bastard dropped out of the race last minute like this was a master plan and it's well executed and we're all falling in it so we can sit here and tear each other apart we're all heading straight to the fire no books are gonna save you no quotes from the philosophical mind of the liberals gonna save you nobody's gonna save you except for your own community if they get their shit together So this is all I got from this video and uh, the truth is that uh, I think a lot of people are losing focus, right? And like I keep saying, I am not going to tell somebody to vote for somebody. That is something that I don't stand for, right? But the reality is that I feel like the Palestinians are kind of being selfish. Why? Because... Black people have really been all out for them. If it's something that they were not all out, I mean, it would be a bit understanding, but black people were all out. Sincerely speaking, I posted Palestinians, like, you know, their content, like my life depended on it at some point. And then I decided to switch to also get a, even to get attention for Congo, Sudan and other people, right? So I am going to say, Black people, you all have done so great because it's not easy for people to speak up for people. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because I see every they say, like according to what she said, she said a lot of people are dying in Palestine. And all what we want to do is to come out and vote for uh, Kamala Harris, right? I also want you all to know that uh, because when you make it all about you, that is where the problem comes. I understand a lot of people are also dying in Palestine and also my own people are dying too. Does that make any sense? Black people are not dying. Nobody is exempted from this. They are dropping dead as well. Police brutality and the rest of it. Are we spread? Of course not. So black people were all there with you people and then said, it's, it's also time, we've really done our best, but it's also time for us to sit back and also fix our own community because you definitely will fix your own community because if you don't fix your own community, you probably will run down to your enemy. So what is wrong with them saying that they want to fix their own community? I think some of them are being so emotional. And uh, forgetting the fact that uh, black people were all out, they showed out, right? So the problem is that they actually told the black, uh, black lady to remove because they told her, if you are going to vote for Kamala Harris, you have to remove the, uh, uh, what is that called? The watermelon, uh, their flag from your from your profile and she actually did remove it now the problem is that the fact that they are going around harassing people because this is harassment we are not going to get anywhere if we continue like this if we continue doing this we're absolutely going to be in the same place nothing is ever going to change 
If you all do not want to vote for Kamala Harris, like I said before, nobody's going to force you. It's okay. Do not vote for her. And then move on with whatever you have to do. But black people have to fix their lives, most especially, right? And if you all decide not to fix yourselves up, in the end, we both are going to suffer it. Yeah. So what am I saying in essence? What I'm saying is in essence is that I, I think enough of all this drama because I call it, I call it drama because that is what it is. Coming out to know who is backing you up and who is not backing you up. How many times have black people come out to call you people, to tell you people, I do not see you all coming out to support us. I do not see you all coming out to speak of what is going on in the black community. It's only a selfish and a self-centered person. See, I am not blaming anybody here, but I am trying to make us understand. Like sometimes we have like this entitlement spirit and all that. We are also entitled, right? Because I am not expecting any help from anybody. If he comes, that's fine. I definitely would appreciate that. But going around harassing people that look like me or telling them that uh, they are going the wrong route, right? Because they are like, you know, voting for the other person. Now, the things affecting them, are you going to help us fix them? Of course, you all will not, because I never see you for a day coming out to protest or say this and all that for in favor of people that look like we have always been the one at the forefront doing all that. So what am I saying? The earlier we figure ourselves out, the better for us. If we choose to continue like this, it is not. It is never getting us anywhere. But I absolutely know this is going to happen, and it is like you know, straight up right in front of our eyes. We really can do better and stop all this coming online to bash black women, black people, because they are not dancing to your tune. Nobody is a monolith. Nobody is a pawn. Nobody is going to dance to anybody's tune. We talk and decide what we want to do and we'll go for it. And stop calling black women or black people, people of color. I don't know where you got that from. That is so wrong. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.